Alright, welcome back. In today's video, I'll give a quick comparison of both PyQt and TKNDAO, which are both popular libraries in Python for creating graphical user interfaces. To start, PyQt has way more features and pre-made widgets than TKNDAO. This includes basic widgets from buttons to combo boxes, and more specific ones like date pickers, font dialogues, video widgets, and even web browsers. There are also additional packages for PyQt if you want to add charts, for example. But when it comes to TKNDAO, you do not have that many pre-made widgets to choose from. TKNDAO only comes with the basic set of widgets, such as labels, buttons, and inputs. But if you want anything outside of that, such as a table widget, you need to make it yourself which can be quite frustrating, especially if it is just a simple application. PyQt also has the upper hand when it comes to customizing your widgets. You can set things such as the icon of a label, the minimum size of a widget, or the minimum size of a column and a grid layout. Whereas with Tkinter, you're mostly restricted to a few customizability options for your widgets and layouts. And if you want anything outside of that, you'll need to come up with your own workarounds. Generally speaking, TKNT is much easier to learn. You can easily get an application such as a login form up and running quickly. And you should also be able to learn TKNT within a few days using the wide variety of tutorials on platforms such as YouTube. But something to note is that the documentation on TKINTER is far from ideal. There aren't much examples and they aren't the most helpful. PyQt is more difficult to get started with. It will probably take 1-3 to three weeks before you're comfortable with the way things are done, depending on how much time you have. But in comparison, the documentation for PyQt is much better than TKNDAO, although it is not the best. And with PyQt, you can also use Qt Designer, which is a drag and drop interface, which you can then use to convert your design to code and just add the functionality in Python. This makes making application much quicker and seamless when compared to TKNTA and you can also easily change your designs. And although PyQt does require more time to master, it will probably be worth it especially if you want to do something more complex. With TKNT, if you want to, for example, make your buttons have rounded corners or have a gradient background, that's simply not possible. Or adding a prefix to your input widget or perhaps to change the buttons on a confirmation pop-up, these features are not possible when using TKNT. And in my experience, if you want something a little different when using TKNT, it usually isn't possible or requires a workaround that makes maintaining your code difficult. Whereas with PyQt, most of the things you need, even the more specific ones, are already built in. And in my opinion, using TKNTAL isn't the most intuitive as well. For example, to align a widget when you are using the pack method, you need to use the anchor keyword argument and specify the bearings. But when you are using the grid method to align the widget, you need to use the sticky keyword argument and pass in the sites accordingly. It's just something small, but there are many of such inconsistencies that slowly add up and might make it confusing to get into when you're get first getting started. So although PyQt is more difficult in terms of your initial investment, it will probably save you more time in the future if you plan to work with it for a long period of time. As a side note, if you want to start learning PyQt, I have a tutorial series for PyQt6 on my channel that teaches you the vast majority of what you need to know to get your application running. This includes the basic widgets, grid layouts, how to use Qt Designer, and much more. TKNT widgets look more outdated than PyQt's, 
but you can use the widgets under the TTK module which also comes pre-installed with Python. The TTK widgets look better and are meant to replace the older widgets in TK Inter. And if you are using those widgets, then it is possible to get your application to look modern, similar to that of PyQt. With TK Inter, you can distribute and use your application without having to pay for any license. But when it comes to PyQt, it is under the general public license. You can use your applications for personal use. But if you want to distribute or to sell your application, you need to give your users the source code as well. If that is not something you want to do, then you need to purchase a license for PyQt and for Qt as well. I'll leave a link to those in the description below. That's about it. Just to summarize, I would highly recommend you use PyQt for making graphical user interfaces in Python. It is far more powerful and useful in the long run. Unless you just want to make a small application with Python quickly, then perhaps consider TKinter for its simplicity. This is because TKinter only has a few widgets to choose from, and if you want anything outside of that, or to customize them further, it's either not possible, or you need to spend a large portion of your time searching for a workaround. With PyQt, the overall experience of developing applications is much more intuitive, and there are much more built-in widgets, though it does take some time to get the hang of it. But you can use tools such as Qt Designer, the documentation, or tutorials to do so. Alright, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if this video has helped you, please consider possibly subscribing or liking the video to see more of such content and to help support my channel.